Are you hungry? I know I am. Let's get cracking. What's up guys, my name is Jacob, this is Conscious Cooking, and today we are making mashed potatoes. And I know what you're thinking, how is that possible without the use of butter and cream and other dairy products? Well, it's very simple. We're going to utilize a different way of achieving the delicious creaminess of mashed potatoes. First and foremost, we are going to use a non-dairy, lactose-free butter substitute. That will help. However, we're also going to be roasting some garlic and onions in the oven until they are soft and creamy and making that to aid in the creaminess of our mashed potatoes. This is an old trick that I learned while trying to make garlic bread. It made the garlic bread kind of soggy, but that should actually be an advantage <laughs> in this specific instance. I'm excited about it. This will probably, probably be a little bit of a longer episode simply because there's a lot of cooking involved. But with that, let's go get started. All right, folks, now, we're gonna be doing this using a loaf pan. And I know that that sounds weird, but it gives us the right amount of space that we need, and it'll also make sure that the heat gets concentrated because it's a nice, thick pan. So I'm gonna leave this off to the side. I'm going to put, I'd say about one cup of garlic into there, because, you know, I like garlicky mashed potatoes. So there's one cup of garlic in there, the next thing we're gonna do is chop up the onion. There's obviously only one way to do that, and that is by chopping up an onion. After we chop all this up, we're going to obviously roast it. By the way, preheat pre or set your oven to 325. I was trying to say too many things at one time. However, we're gonna roast this at 325 until the garlic is easily pierced with a fork. My guess is that that's going to take us probably 30 to 45 minutes. It, it will take a bit. You do have to keep that in mind. Like I said, there's a lot of cooking involved in this episode. And by that, I really just mean there's a long cooking time. One of the things you can definitely do is do this separately. It keeps in the fridge nicely. Um, you don't have to do everything at the same time, same day, because it, it also takes up oven space and stove space, because we are going to be boiling our potatoes. So peel your onions off. We're just going to cube these up into small pieces. It doesn't have to be super uniform or look super nice, because like I said, it's all getting blended in our food processor in the end. Just needs to be small enough. You're not gonna shove a whole onion in there, is what I'm trying to get at. Make sure there's no root pieces in there, like that. Then we're just gonna put everything in with the garlic. Cut up the other side. And then we're gonna do something a little bit unorthodox. We're just, we're gonna add some oil, salt, and pepper to this. Because basically we want this part to be balanced, and then we're gonna make sure that the potatoes are balanced, and then when we put everything together, it will naturally be balanced. So, onions in as well. We're going to add salt, black pepper, and some olive oil Sorry, not olive oil, canola oil to this. Actually, you could use olive oil if you wanted. That's actually a matter of personal preference. I'm gonna go with canola oil because it's a little bit more of a neutral flavor. But I wanna show you guys how much to add because I don't want you putting in too much because that will make the product at the end greasy. And we don't want greasy mashed potatoes, we just want creamy mashed potatoes. So, you don't wanna add enough to fill this. You wanna add enough just until you can tell that you've covered the bottom which I have not done quite yet. I gotta add a little bit more. That should be good right there. The reason that's all we need is because there's plenty of moisture in this already. There's moisture in garlic and there's moisture in the onions. So we're gonna mix this up until it's thoroughly coated. Then we're going to add the salt and pepper. Wash my hand off first. Just got a towel standing by. But I have salt. 
and my pepper is somewhere in here. I have found it. I totally didn't drop anything. But we're gonna add kosher salt and black pepper, about one layer of each, just until you see everything coated in there. This will also help to bring out moisture. Same thing with the black pepper, just until it's nice and coated. And then, once again, I'm just gonna mix it with my hands. My hands are clean, I don't really care about them being oily, because I'm about to wash them off. But take this, throw it in the oven, 325, 30 to 45 minutes, depending on your oven and your altitude. Now the next thing we need to do is add our potatoes. So you're gonna rinse them off, and then shuck them in there. Now I'm gonna start heating up my water to make sure that it will come to a boil a little bit faster just to make my life easier. But rinse them off one by one and chuck them in there. We're not making a colossal batch of potatoes. The reason I'm using such a large pan is because I want to make the cooking time not short, because it's never going to be short. These are potatoes. They take a while to cook. But I want to make it shorter. And as you can see, we're also using a variety of potatoes. Each of these potatoes grants something different to the final dish. Now, red potatoes are waxy. They will provide a backbone, so to speak, to the potatoes. Golden potatoes, these smaller ones, are creamier. They'll provide a nicer, smoother texture. And rust potatoes are just regular old potatoes. They'll provide the body. The reason we're doing this is because I want a balanced product, but I don't want to have to use a lot of dairy to get it. So we're using a little bit of science to avoid having to use fat and dairy and things like that. So, I want to cover this with at least an inch of water. I'm going to go with probably two or three inches, because I really want these things to cook quickly. Yes, it's going to take a while to come to a boil. However, after that, it will begin cooking a lot faster than if we didn't do that. So, wait until it's covered. I know you guys can see just as well as I can. Then we're going to salt this water thoroughly. How do you know it's thoroughly salted? It should taste like seawater. That is how you know that it is thoroughly salted. And we're almost deep enough to where I feel comfortable. I'd say we're good right about there. I'm going to start adding salt. That looks like it's going to be about right. Yep. Salt water. So pick this up, put it over your biggest, beefiest burner, and leave it to boil until the potatoes are easily pierced with a fork. I haven't made mashed potatoes in well over a few years. I don't remember how long it takes. All right, folks. The potatoes have finished cooking. They have drained in a colander, and there they are. As you can see, we did experience some breakage. That's to be expected. But what we need to do now is break this down. Potato masher. We just need to break it down. It's not gonna become creamy yet. We just need to literally break it apart into smaller, more manageable pieces. If you have any really large pieces of skin like this one, well, it's falling apart, but. Like I said, there was some breakage naturally, as part of the cooking process. So, if you need any help breaking this down, I recommend either an immersion blender, which you need to use in very short pulses, otherwise this will turn into a giant gummy lump, or a pair of forks or a knife, something like that. Maybe even a pizza cutter, because it's, you know, round. But, this is successfully broken down in terms of shape and size. Now all we need to do is add the rest of the ingredients. Alright folks, so, we have our garlic and onion mixture blended. I'm going to remove the blade and add that in as well. Make sure you get all of it out put that in the sink, keep it clean. Now we're gonna mash this up some more. 
Now, this is going to make this a lot more homogeneous by providing a lot of moisture. However, it's not going to be done yet because we still need to add the dairy-free butter substitute. That's what's going to make this actually creamy and actually look like mashed potatoes. And the reason for that is because of the structure of butter. The structure of butter is water and air suspended in fat. Now, why is this important? Well, the reason that this is important is because we don't want to add pure fat to the mashed potatoes. Because then, the fat would sit, and the starch from the potatoes would just sit next to it. They wouldn't combine. The fact that butter has air and water in it as well means that you can really work it into a mixture without it just, you know, pooling in one corner. But you're probably wondering, why do we need fat in mashed potatoes to begin with? Why don't we just really chop them up and make them really small and they'll be creamy that way? Well, the thing about potatoes is that they're mostly starch. And starch, when you really, really agitate it, releases all of its molecules, and then when it comes back together, it gelatinizes. Which basically means, if you overwork your potatoes, they'll turn into gum. How do you avoid this? Well, there are a few different ways that you can do this. Either one, you can leave your potatoes pretty chunky, which I don't feel like doing, or you can add fat to them. The reason that this works is because fat lubricates the starch molecules and prevents them from attaching to each other and creating a large gelatinous structure. So long story short, you need butter and mashed potatoes, but you don't need a whole stick. You just need enough so that everything is lubricated so that you don't end up with a big gummy mess. All right, folks, we're gonna add this one spoonful at a time, just until it's creamy. Again, while this isn't actually butter, it's still, you know, mostly fat. So it's still going to make this thing obviously a lot creamier, but it's still going to contribute fat to it. And fat is typically more difficult to digest, so work it in one spoonful at a time until it's been completely worked in, and then you can add the next one. Don't worry, there's plenty of residual heat in this mass of potatoes to break that one spoonful down. And it's completely gone, I'm gonna add the next one, and I'm gonna keep doing this until I have achieved full creaminess. has gotten us to this point, and it looks really good. I'm going to add one more, and here's why. I'm not going to be able to eat all of this in one sitting. No human being should be able to do that. So, by adding a little bit extra now, we won't have to add more later in the event that we end up reheating this for future consumption. However, this doesn't mean that it's done. We still need to add salt and pepper to taste, as well as potentially some garlic and onion powder, depending on how you want yours to taste. Now for me, I like a lot of garlic in my mashed potatoes, so I may be adding more. The important part, however, is the texture. The texture needs to be tested, because if the texture isn't where we need it to be right now, we can actually fix it. That's the good thing about not using dairy. And with using a variety of potatoes. Even though we do have the waxy red potatoes in there, because we have the Yukon golden potatoes as well, we still have the chance to adjust the texture of this because we can actually blend this. Not a lot, but we can blend it a little bit without it becoming gummy. 
First things first, though. Taste test. Now, it's very hot. And very good. It needs more salt, it needs more pepper, and it needs more garlic. It doesn't really need more onion. It's fine there. However, As I said, it does need those ingredients. And then we're going to add one last thing, which I've been holding off for quite a while. I haven't really mentioned it yet. So first and foremost, we're gonna add some garlic. Not much, it really doesn't need much, because it's good as it is. As I said, I just like a little bit of extra garlic in my mashed potatoes. The last thing that we're going to be adding is some thyme. Now, I love thyme with potatoes. It is a fantastic pairing. All right, that's a good garlic content. I, I like that. I like that the way it is. But we're gonna add some salt. As I said, it does need a little bit more salt. Not much. It definitely needs more black pepper. The black pepper is definitely lacking. So I'm gonna add like a full good layer of this because I like black pepper and this is definitely lacking in it. And keep in mind, every time you mash this, it's gonna become a little bit smoother and creamier, but you don't wanna overwork it. Like don't sit here for an hour doing this because it does have the potential to turn gummy. I know that we have those Yukons in there that are keeping this creamier, but you still wanna be careful. So I'm gonna test the pepper content. That's good. Now I'm gonna add the thyme. And similar to the salt, I just wanna add a little bit. I really just want the hint of thyme. I don't want thyme to be a major player in this production, if you wanna use that as your analogy. But, now that I've explained to you exactly what the structure of butter is, I've explained to you why we're using these three different kinds of potatoes. And I've explained to you how to balance all of the flavors. There's no plating presentation for this episode because this is mashed potatoes. You all know that it's just for eating. And that's just perfect in my opinion. I'm gonna leave it like this with you guys looking directly <laughs> into a giant bowl of mashed potatoes delicious mashed potatoes. Thank you all so very much for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe down below. Share this video with your friends. This is a perfect side dish for Thanksgiving, at least in my opinion. But that's for me. Thank you all once again for all of your support, and I will see you all next week. Goodbye.